from Thanksgiving, Chad Prevost, and uh, every listener out there. Hey, man, did you have a good holiday? You went to Missouri, Missouri. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Welcome back to you two. And uh, yeah, I'm, I almost need a vacation from my vacation, but it's uh, good to be back. It is tough coming back. It, it uh, I don't know. It, you, like you have to like it's playing into shape. It's like coming back into to camp, especially after a big holiday. Yeah, because we've been out since like Tuesday. Especially with all that tryptophan I took in. Tryptophan. I heard that's just like a that's a that's fake though. That's not real. Like that that doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I, I've heard that too. But I I was sure drowsy after I had a whole lot of it. Did you uh did you do any Black Friday shopping or did you go out like on Thanksgiving at five p.m.? I went. I did some Black Friday movie watching. Saw what? Knives Out. Oh, that's uh that's the that's the guy who ruined Star Wars directed that. Fantastic <laughs> movie. Fantastic. What's it good? What's it about? So good. Uh, it's like a Agatha th- Agatha Christie mm-hmm. kind of stylish. Like who done it? Oh. with great acting. Yeah, really fun. Ninety six on the tomato meter. You didn't see Frozen two? No, only a seventy eight on the tomato oh. meter there. Yeah, well, I I think my kids will like it. I got my three year old like this big Sven that he can sit on. You put a carrot oh. in its mouth and it it talks. I didn't do any Black Friday shopping, but I do like that the stores open at five. So because usually like the people I don't know you like the least leave at that time, and there's yeah. more pumpkin pie for you. <laughs> like the kind of person who will just take off on uh, on Friday. My wife did get a wreath that was so big we could barely get it back, and then it doesn't fit on the front door. Did she? Did you get your Christmas tree? We did. We got our Christmas tree delivered Ooh. to us, Dooner. Delivered to you? Yeah, fresh cut from a farm. Yeah. Uh, through our church, it was a fundraiser for our church. Seventy-five dollars oh, wow. for this tree. They deliver it to you, and it's ginormous. It's the biggest tree. We've ever had one of those ones like a raccoon inside, it was scraping the top of the ceiling. Oh wow! You know? Yeah, it was uh, impressive stuff. Oh, very. Uh, have you ever gotten a fake tree? I, I, I haven't. I kind of like I, if I go over someone's house and they have a fake tree. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like look down upon them a little bit. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, we wanted to go to the fake tree a few years ago, but it was such a sad experience. Yeah. We've been doing the live trees all of this time, and you go to Walmart, and it's like you know the fluorescent lights and everything's white, and you're getting a fake tree. Yeah. It's. I don't know. Yeah. My parents did it for years. It didn't bother me too much, but. You know who's not fake? Our sponsor this month, it's DDCFPO. DDCFPO is the number one preferred back office partner for transportation. Want the most robust AI data processing solution available in the market today? Yeah. Of course you do. So then know what you got to do. You got to visit DDCFPO.com or you can email them info at DDCFPO.com. Do it now. Sounds like headlines. It's headline time. All right, so we talked about Black Friday, and early data shows that foot traffic to U.S. stores fell. Fell about 6.2% on Black Friday, while online sales reached uh, 7.4 million that day, up from 6.2 billion last year. Shopping was up 2.3% on Thanksgiving to those people who I want to leave so I can have more pumpkin pie. Those people, 2.3% more of them, were leaving the party early, according to ShopTrack data. Yeah, uh, the surge in online shopping, of course, isn't surprising. $7.4 billion is a new record. Ooh. And with today being Cyber Monday, yeah. who wins? Who wins? Cyber Monday or Black Friday? Um, what do you think? Oh, you already know. It's, I, I know it, the answer. It appears retail in and outside the stores will have legs this holiday season. What in, about you guys out there? In fact, according to Shopper Track, mm-hmm. eight of the 10 busiest days for retail in 2019 are still to come. Yeah. By the way, Dooner, did you uh, did you buy anything over the weekend? I saw you at Walmart. I was I had a bunch of groceries in my cart. I had a, a you. Well, I mean, I wasn't even counting that. Oh, that I, you don't count like groceries as like a yeah, purchase. I mean, it's it counts. I, I bought did. um. Yeah, I saw you there too. I know. Crazy. A little out of context, you know. I saw Nick Austin, uh, the guy who does fast paced forecasts sometimes on the airplane out of Georgia, and then I saw you. In, yeah, uh, in Walmart, roaming around, and my wife hadn't met you in person before. Even though we've been doing the show forever, you're kind of antisocial outside of work. So we've <laughs> no, just kidding, but we never run into each other. And she right. was looking at you. And she's like, "Is that George Clooney or is that Chad Prio?" She's giving you. Uh, <laughs> can you do the look? She, she kind of gave me can, the. She, she kind of gave me the. Yeah. Do you buy anything? Uh, there the store. Yeah, in fact, right there, I was in the coffee section, mm. and we saw that there was some mocha flavored. Oh yeah, uh, Starbucks. I pointed that out to coffee, you. Coffee, and I was like, you know what? That would be great. 
for the wife. I did grocery shopping Sunday. Did she appreciate your? Uh, she did. She yeah. said. She said, "I'm surprised you got this." And I said, "I got it for you." And she said, "Well, that's sweet." Yeah. So thanks for the brownie points there. You're welcome. Good suggestion. Uh, let's. Amazon reportedly tests inventory staging for merchants. Mm. Storage and replenishment service allows products to be stored near fulfillment centers to allow faster restocking during the holiday rush. Amazon is reportedly testing a new service that allows merchants to stage inventories near fulfillment centers to meet holiday demand. Amazon is piloting the new service called, again, Storage and Replenishment in Ontario, California, and plans to expand it elsewhere in the U.S. Bloomberg reported this on December 2nd, citing documents it reviewed. The e-commerce giant is looking for a way to handle larger holiday volumes. The service aims to alleviate pressure off its primary facilities while mimicking restocking items. It also comes as Amazon faces growing criticism for its warehousing model. A recent report by Reveal Center for Investigative Reporting and The Atlantic found serious injury rates double the national average at some Amazon facilities. Wow. A shocking development. Amazon's foray into staging inventories comes as it faces increased competition in fulfillment and warehousing, particularly from Shopify. Shopify's nascent fulfillment center is leveraging newly acquired technology from Six River Systems that will make it easier to bring third-party warehouses with unused capacity into their fold, Dooner. Shout out to Six River Systems. I had them on my old podcast. Uh, fellow local yeah. Massachusetts company got that big deal from Shopify. They make a robot called Chuck. I've interviewed Chuck before. What's up with Chuck? I don't know. When you interview a robot, I mean, it's, they do whatever they're programmed to do. <laughs> All right, U.S. stocks tumble. This isn't good news. U.S. stocks tumble as Trump. U.S. stocks tumble as Trump threatens further tariffs. So dun, I need to write dun, tongue dun. twisters for myself like that. The S and P 500 took its biggest hit in two months on news that the U.S. would increase tariffs if the U.S. and China can't reach a trade agreement. Trump also said that he is reinstating steel and aluminum tariffs against Argentina and Brazil, and the markets rebelled. That, combined with weak factory data, which has seen manufacturing under pressure in these trying times of trade uncertainty, could hurt global economic momentum. So here to answer your question, if you guys guessed out there what did better, Black Friday or Cyber Monday, on the plus side, Americans are on track to spend $9.4 billion today on this Cyber Monday. What's interesting, though, is like, so are we Cyber that predictable? Monday wins. Are we that predictable? Like people just know automatic. It's like sort of like movie receipts. They already know, like on a Friday, by the end of the day Friday, they already know how much that movie's going to make over the weekend. We don't have free will if you think about it. No, I'm just kidding. We're do robots. Or we? do we? I don't, I don't know. know. We're living in a uh, simulation. Yeah. I mean, are we the originals or the clones? Stay tuned. Who knows? Union Pacific sues Texas Town over 1870s era jobs promise. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> Union Pacific is suing the city of Palestine, Texas, to nullify a 150-year-old contract to keep a certain number of jobs in t- in the town indefinitely. Hmm. The agreement between Union Pacific and Palestine, which was signed in 1872, Ooh. dates back to the days when the city was at the crossroads of several railroad companies that promised to keep jobs there indefinitely according to the Palestine Herald Press. That's like back when people used to like re- rob trains, like the great train robbery in yeah. James. Oh, you know? those good old days. Union Pacific's lawsuit filed November 27th with the U.S. District Courts in the Eastern District of Texas alleges the railroad's contract with Palestine should have been invalidated when the Federal Surface Transportation Board became the nation's regulatory authority for freight rail in 1996. And again in 1997, when the Union Pacific merged with, they're just getting around to this now? Yeah, uh, yes. it's 20 years. What's 20 wow. years? Time moves between, slower in uh, wherever this was. Uh, between centuries. Yeah. The agreement requires the Omaha, Nebraska-based railroad to keep 0.52% of its total jobs in Palestine, local officials said. That's very specific. Union, P- Union Pacific operates around 32,000 miles of track in 23 western states. The company has had around 37,000 employees in its last earnings report, Palestine Mayor uh, Steve Presley told the Herald Press the city would fight the lawsuit mm. 
Presley said, the city council will decide on the best course of action once we have a chance to discuss the lawsuit. Personally, I will do everything within my power to keep all jobs possible here in Palestine. Mm, speaking of jobs, you know who's joining us? We have uh, one of our newest employees, Freight Broker Live, is a gentleman come named Stephen Stephen Oatley. Oatley. He's going to come in here for a little interview segment as we introduce him to the What the Truck audience. You guys might know him from Freight Broker Live. Longtime fan. Five, count them, five. Five, five, five good, good minutes. First time in, in the booth. What's up, man? What's going on? Right to the mic, right to the mic. <laughs> All right, Stephen. People who might not be familiar with you, you're Stephen Oatley. You're from uh, New England, Massachusetts, Originally, Massachusetts, yeah. via. But you come up here from Florida. I did. And uh, what do you what are you doing these days? What was what's Freight Broker Live? If people aren't familiar, Freight Broker Live is a online talk show where I, <laughs> I guess, talk freight. So I talk about what it's like to be a freight broker, and I have a unique perspective because I used to be a carrier and used to work as a shipper and and used to be a logistics manager for shippers and, and a consultant. So I have a little bit of a different spin on the brokerage perspective. And I feel that it's, uh, it's allowed a lot of people to actually receive logistics in a different, different view. A voice to the community, do. right? Right. Well, yeah, what's that spin? Some, sometimes you, uh, you, you'll talk for an hour, I noticed, and sometimes you'll do a marathon like what you did on Saturday, I believe, or you went like seven hours. I did. That was impressive. It Are you was... ever going to do anything like that again? No. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no. you did okay. a seven hour long. That would that was like the uh, like the Tom broke off of freight right there doing it, seven what, hours. What were you doing? What were you what were you riffing on for seven seven hours to the community? I was teaching the startup of of I had to start a trucking company from the very beginning. So from from wow. from the idea of just getting the idea to actually I showed how to do the filing. Yeah. And and Oh, you weren't like unlock the door, turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> and like it was just gonna keep guys in real time. Oh, I'm I, teaching I, you in real time. I showed everything. So I actually that did, taken did the filing live and then we talked about I showed how to use utilize both major load boards and we had a couple of interviews with factoring and insurance and we <laughs> I spent <laughs> I spent too much time. By the end I was kinda delirious of, of tired of hearing myself. But well, one of the, uh, speaking of getting delirious, one of the things that, you know, drivers are having to deal with here in the holiday season, in the winter, difficult driving conditions, right? You drove up here from Florida. Tampa, for, where in Florida? Port St. Lucie. Oh, Port okay. Port St. Lucie. Which yeah. should have been a nine-hour drive, turned into how long? A 15-hour drive. Just wow. over. Wait, yeah. was this because of holiday traffic? Yeah, and idiot drivers. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's Shock, the only... I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, it was, it was rough. I mean, it, a lot of the times you just have a slowdown or accidents for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. So it was just backed up. Yeah. And then Compression other, traffic. Other times, like I made a video when we're sit, sitting in standstill traffic, so I made a little quick uh, quick video. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know, this is probably just another reason why we're just having stupid traffic. And, and then all of a sudden, an ambulance comes flying by. Wow. I'm like, well, maybe this one was real. Maybe this one's real. <laughs> What's the longest you've ever been stuck in Cape traffic coming back from Cape Cod? <laughs> I know you used to live over there. I remember a 4th of July, I was driving back, and it took like three and a half hours to get I, back to Boston. It was terrible. I, I See, I don't remember the cave. I know one time to go from my gym in Port St. Lucie to my house, which is about three miles. Yeah. It took me an hour and seven minutes. Brutal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brutal. That's you know, uh, deep city traffic. When I was yeah. driving back from Misery uh, uh, from earlier, like the compression traffic, it's wall to wall coming down the mountain, and, and, you're, and you're headed. The, and there are these dudes that, like, run up on people's, you know, on their tails and just stay there. And the, or then they'll like dart into another lane and just stay on their tail. <laughs> I'm like, what is that accomplishing? I I, that... I, t I told my wife that yesterday because I was driving. And it just makes is, people mad. There's it a truck. makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> just, just thinking about it. <laughs> you you break a lot of stories. You uh, you cover a lot of crime. You break a lot of stories. How do you source those? And how did you get into the media side of this game? Uh, I got into the media side out of I don't know I don't know that, yeah that, that's but in terms of sourcing things I. I believe in an extensive amount of research on pretty much everything I do from even as a broker on sales prospecting. I, I would do way too much research and, and figuring out who a customer is. And the same thing with carriers or any consulting client. And I took this, I take the same approach to media and researching articles. And, and I found that just by utilizing every possible viable um, product out there, it helps me to be able to, to, pick out pretty good articles what's story of the yeah. year story of the year are the biggest story uh crime wise or anything that you've covered i mean it, 
that you've covered, not not in general, Frank. Okay. Well, yeah. the Omni Track story is probably the biggest one that I broke. Yeah. With the ELD shutdown, but personally, the lobster one, I, and I don't know if I broke the lobster. I wrote about it first, but yeah, the the lobster, the the broker lobster theft. Yeah. Was, yeah, we talked about that. People, yeah. people love a little lobster yeah. theft. Yeah. That that I mean that, that just, was a fun one. As a broker I mean, it's too. Sad, but when sad. you think about Why about it, it from a. <laughs> I woke because I lost freight. I guess because they were still yeah. lobster. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, sad for he, the, the. He likes the lobster. I guess so. Oh, I love the lobster. Yeah, <laughs> you're kidding me. You were uh, saying there are rats of the sea, though. I'm saying like that cockroaches, they were like sea the cockroaches. Sea yeah. Oh, what do you consider century. them? I consider them a lovely delicatessen. No, actually, I don't. Ever since yeah. I read David Foster Wallace's "Consider the Lobster" and 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 what? how they they're treated, <laughs> I, I just I feel differently about about consuming. Have you lobster. seen Jake Gyllenhaal's "The Lobster"? I have not. Oh no. Was that Jake Gyllenhaal in that <laughs> lobster? In a, in a movie, right? I think he was. He turns into a lobster at the yeah. end in the woods. I actually don't like lobster at all. But really? I, which is sad because I'm from the Cape originally. So yeah. Pretty and it's much got everyone. a lot of protein, and you must consume a lot of protein yeah. as a power lift. I right? do. Yeah. yeah. But mostly whey protein, like an actual shake. Oh, so. that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. We have time for one last question. Uh, how to... Well, I guess you're you're kind of porting some of your stuff over here. You're moving over, so we can't really plug anything necessarily yet. But I guess if they want to check out your previous work, they'd go to Freight Broker Live. Yeah, you can check out Freight Broker Live on Facebook or YouTube, or you could follow Freight. So with F R the number eight uh -huh. Broker Live on Twitter, because that'll be the continuous Twitter, and I'll always update it. Wow! All right. Well, wow. it's great to have you on. Yeah. Your thanks for joining us. Stories. Good to have you on as a Freightcaster. Yeah, we look we look forward to having All you on right. on more Thank programs. You. Yeah. All right, yeah. Stephen Odley, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And now. That was five good minutes, but now it's time for a little segment we like to call Strickland Business with our buddy Zach Strickland. Here he comes. You know him from Freightways now. Hey. He's a former off-the-supply chain champion. Once an off-the-supply chain champion, always an off-the-supply chain champion. <laughs> But I think you might, you could win it too, too often. That's, I love it. It sounds like Cybertruck. It sounds like uh, just, if you were bumping that in a loop at a Cybertruck, like that should be the horn. I, I, I would pretty, listen to it. That's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> it is hot. I'm, I'm learning how to make dance. those exact sounds on, on my own scent. Oh yeah, yeah. How how do you do it? It's it's cool. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's Have you created some new yeah. some new jams? Yeah. <laughs> bring them in. Okay. The, the business of music. <laughs> yeah, well, drop the guitar. You, get to the switchboard. Yeah, yeah man. Or do a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> Doing loops, which is what you're about to do, right? Yeah. What's uh? Speaking what's, of loops and cyclical em cycles, what, what's <laughs> speaking what's of empty right promises? Now? What about empty containers? <laughs> empty containers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I noticed uh, in Sonar. Yes. The, uh, you know, some of our rail data that tells us where loaded and empty rail moves, the different uh, container sizes and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I noticed an anomaly in uh, some of the empty rail container movements. And I thought that was interesting because that's a, a pretty good signal because all these big shipping companies, yeah. they own most of these containers. And they're trying to, they don't really know that much about domestic freight volumes and all that kind of stuff. They, they know what's coming across the ocean and back and forth, but... You know that there's one of them sitting there right now. They're like, I know plenty. Yeah. Get all <laughs> yeah. defensive about it. Yeah, I, will, I, I mean, know more than about the... the, uh, the I got target. sonar. I know a little. Yeah. But that's not their main get business. Get sonar. Yeah. <laughs> that's not their main business. So it's, it's you know, just like I did. It wasn't my main business to know what Home Depot did, but I, okay. I knew some Reeling about it. Reeling it back in now. <laughs> you know? Reeling it back. So... Uh, just to see that there was a huge increase in the amount of empty rail containers going into New York, New Jersey, and a lot of empty rail containers leaving, uh, or actually the amount going into Los Angeles was declining. So I, I took that as a signal as like, okay, they're rebalancing their, their containers. Uh, so that means that they, they have some sort of semblance of where, you know, either they're going to ship them back across the, the ocean, which they typically don't want to do, empty, yeah. but... Um, they're getting ready for some sort of push, and they finally figured out or accepted the fact that a lot of the freight is now moving into the East Coast versus the West Coast. Maybe not, you Do know. Do they have an East Coast bias? They're starting to get a little bit of one. Actually, yeah. they had a West Coast bias, and they're they're correcting. What do you think Good about uh, what do you think about Black Friday sales being down six point two percent? But the day before Thanksgiving, so two point three percent more sales yeah. on Thanksgiving Day. Six point two percent down on Thanksgiving, and then today. What do we say? Nine point seven billion or something is projected 9. for Cyber Monday. 4, I think, yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, six point two percent less retail foot traffic. Yeah, yeah, but but actually up seven point four billion from six point two billion last year. Sales. Yeah. Sales. Yeah. Right. Well, did anybody talk about the weather over the holiday? I mean, because that has that has a pretty big impact oh, on yeah. uh, on what people go. Storm I mean, especially Ezekiel. yeah, it was uh, I think it was rolling across the Midwest. I know we got drilled. It was lightning and thundering here. Uh, on Saturday. Uh, yeah, so, I drove that, in the rain all the way. Yeah, but that storm was coming through, so a lot of these major metro centers were getting hit with Ezekiel or, or one of the yeah. one of those big storms. But the stocks are getting hit because so we have these good retail numbers, but then to, I guess, counterbalance it, Trump has threatened to add new tariffs to China if they don't come to a deal, and they added the aluminum and steel tariffs. Uh, they're reinstating Argentina. them for Argentina and Brazil. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know... That's a never-ending. I don't think we're going to get resolution for that anytime soon. Uh, yeah, they don't seem to be friends. I don't think. Is don't there manipulation <laughs> going? Like, what? What's the deal? Like, why pick? Because there's got to be some motivation when you pick a day like like today to to do that. Is it because of the positive impact of retail sales, or it's because you have leverage? I mean, everything yeah. everything he does is about leverage and how he can negotiate through. He doesn't have leverage when the economy, for instance, is going right. Uh, you know, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that, that's where he loses all his leverage. I think he actually gave back. Uh, a lot of ground when things were looking a little grim. Uh, it was was it last month? Things were a little grim, and he was yeah. like, you know what? Maybe maybe I will let them, you know, go in and you know, yeah. maybe give you a little bit of money back. You know, and well, the factory <laughs> data is is was part of it too. So factory yeah. data that's coming out that came out today in the report was was not great. Yeah, I don't know if that you'll I have. A, I didn't read that one. On Freedomomics, <laughs> that's okay. not, yeah, not on the chart of the week. That's not on the not on the chart of the week yet. No, it'll be on the next way chart. Way off the chart. Way no, off the reservation. That's just breaking news that came out like right before we we went on air. Oh, really? We just thought you well, might be a little more informed. I guess. That's, yeah, I was just probably doing my job. Up just there. keep uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. keeping it Strickland. Yeah, I was, I was, I was busy uh, helping Scott Orland with the algorithm to our rate predictor model. Oh, Did, yeah. now you're just showing up. Did you know that he has a podcast coming out? Yeah. Two well, days. you kind of have a couple now. So you sneaky ha- already have one called On the Spot. Yeah. It, it's not really a podcast. It's a video. I mean, it's a show. Well, it's more, yeah. I would say it's more a podcast than a show. Yeah. Because you, you don't really show anything in videos. Yeah. So, like, it may as well be a podcast. Sure. It's me and JP uh, every Friday yeah. talking about what's going on in the market, on the spot market in general, or just in the general freight market itself, near term. Uh, Type conditions. Yeah. We're blurring the lines, though. A lot of our yeah. podcasts are also being filmed, like Freightonomics. I don't know right out the gate if it's going to be filmed, but it, in December, it will join the Freightwaves TV roster, so download the Freightwaves TV app. There's also a Freightcast app that's going to come out soon, too. That's are, cool. Are you going to call, call it Strickland Business? No, no, no it's oh. Freightonomics. Oh, Freightonomics is the... I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Anthony Smith are going to oh, kick off. Oh, that's right, of course. Yeah. Yes. So he's the macro yeah. guy. I'm going to be the freight guy, and yeah. we're going to go back and forth, and we're actually... I, we're going to argue. Uh, we're gonna get into it a little bit. I oh, think. good. Yeah. What do you guys so, typically have as like spats about? What do you um, like? Chad and I have our little spats. What do you guys disagree on? So surprisingly, he is into these kind of sentiment indexes and things like that. You know, yeah. the government yeah. data because he's yeah. been conditioned to like government data and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. I, I always like to see the granular detail. I like to know why, but I want to understand exactly why and what's going on. Uh, not that he doesn't, but. He uses these, you know, well, I feel like buying something today, indices, uh, and I want to yeah. see you know how much did real. you buy. Is that, pseudo, <laughs> is that pseudoscience or pseudoeconomics? Well, that, I, I would call it pseudoscience, so economics, pseudomath. It, you're the dynamic duo. Would you, are you the Batman to his Robin, or, or, or is he the Robin and you're the Batman? Wait. He's, he's definitely got me on the physicality side. Yeah. He's, uh, not, he's so a powerful he's, man. Yeah. Uh, so it's good for you to Who do you think? Do you see Stephen Oatley out there? Who do you think can lift more, Anthony or Stephen? We'll have to have them match up. Oh, I'm I'm putting it on Anthony. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It, that, what does he? How much does he get up there? Uh, dude, I've seen him in the gym. It's, he can bench yeah. press like 400. Wow. He's like powered by Sour Patch Kids if too. You, if you see a, <laughs> see, there's a picture floating around of him playing rugby. Yeah. And his quads are the. It looks like somebody cut down a 200 year old oak, and just put it right there. Jesus. That's a, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's older than that uh, yeah. that that railroad town that was fighting over that 1870 <laughs> long. Yeah, that was just 150. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey Zach, thanks for joining us. We look forward to your show dropping later this week. Yeah. Congratulations, cool, thanks, thanks, buddy. Take it easy, man. All right. Yeah. Now it's time to see who made the dean's list, right? Nope. That's there we go. Bring him on. Joseph Solez, he said Cyber Monday, what the truck? Zach Barnhouse, he said represent Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Yeah, All represent. Right. Hey, Dean. Good day. If you guys were listening on the radio, Dean and I were talking about the logistics of Christmas. 
Uh, Andrew Cox, he uh, from Great Quarter Guys, contributed to that show. He did his host his radio hosting debut. It's like a young Chad Prevost just holding his own out there. <laughs> great job. Um, yeah, he did. Didn't he do yes, a great we're job? Very awesome proud of him. Job. You wouldn't have known it was very his first time, and and man. he was. Um, you wouldn't have known he was twenty either if he didn't take a shot at me and said I'm at least twenty years older than him. During the show. Well, uh, Dean, we know you could riff on a lot of different things. It's winter time, hard miles out there. Mm. What, what's on your mind? What's something that you want to share in, with us? In one of the most bizarre things I've seen in my entire trucking career, uh, last weekend on the I-15 on the Cajun Pass, over the weekend, yeah. there were about a dozen people playing in the snow on a truck runaway ramp. Mm. One person oh. was even snowboarding. So this is on a ramp down yes. a big mountain where brake fade is a, is an issue. And if you've ever had it happen, you'll know that you have no ability to stop the vehicle other than plowing into the soft gravel. What was bizarre was the pictures on social media of these folks just in in sort of quite nonchalantly playing in the snow and having snowball fights and snow on a on a highly dangerous part of the, the mountain. Wow, Ooh. what could go so wrong? Do they make the list? That's the list. Don't park on the truck Do runway ramp. No right. one. Snowboard That's the on first the thing on the Dean's list. You'll make the Dean's list if you pro for, for bad reasons, right? That would be like the yeah. Proctor's list or something. We'll have to find them on Twitter and give them a shout out. It's like a death wish. Um, uh, yeah. Number two on the, de on, on number on the two, death on wish. On the death wish. Well, it could be for some, but yeah. number two is uh, IMO 2020. Mm. Okay. And it's a pretty In big my deal. Opinion. We are 20, <laughs> 29 days away from the big event bum, where bum, bum. major shipping lines have to convert to uh, low sulfur you know, fuel. They have to drop from 3.5% to 0.5%. There's a few options they've got, you know, scrubbers, uh, LNG powered vessels. Uh, or, or using different types of fuel. It's the latter that's the bigger issue for truckers because when you take another couple of million barrels a day from the ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel market that trucks run on, when you increase demand on, a, on existing supply, it could raise truck prices. So in the next 29 days, truckers, asset-based carriers in particular, need to watch the IMO 2020 and read John Kingston's Saturday oil mm. report religiously. He, uh, he's coming out with a new show too. Drilling Deep, John Kingston. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. going to have his own podcast. He's the man. Thoughts. Yeah. And the, the last thing on my list is really about e-commerce. Uh, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks that as an Amazon Prime customer, uh, I've noticed that normally when I, when I would put in uh, two-day delivery for free, most of the time it would come in two days. Yeah. I've noticed in the last 10 of 10 deliveries that I've been tracking wow. with doing my Christmas shopping, yeah. they've all arrived in under 24 hours. Which, oh, which whoa. Which means... Mm means that distribution centers are not only moving closer to big populations, they are m more stocked with a wider variety of goods. For example, I went to my local hardware store to buy a uh, Step 4 fall fertilizer for my yard, and they didn't have it. So I went outside and I thought, I will just try Amazon Prime. Which isn't a great place to get that. Two right? 45-pound bags, right? Yeah. Pretty heavy for, for final mile. Don't you end up on a list if you buy too much fertilizer online? I <laughs> <laughs> well, with my diesel consumption. Yeah, I know. I People may... are going to start getting, uh, they're going to look at you I twice. May, I may be on that list already. <laughs> um, Dean's made a different list. Anyway, uh, the two bags of fertilizer arrived. 13 hours later. Wow. So it means that somebody has got stuff in warehouses close to where I live. Um, length of haul is down to around 420 miles for dry vans. So length of haul is down about 4% year to date, but uh, e-commerce sales are up about 4% year to date when you look at the year over year change. So yeah. it tells me that the, the, the trucking length of haul for dry vans is getting shorter as distribution centers move closer to populations. It's changing the whole freight dynamic. Cyber Monday going to set records today, too, Apparently. speaking of that. You will see, have you looked at the carrier, though, so are most of these deliveries being done by Amazon themselves? Most of them are in the Amazon Sprinter vans. The guys yeah. that I talked to uh, yesterday, I talked to a young guy who was delivering. He had 170 deliveries for 230 packages, and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I was the last delivery, which was wow. kind of amazing. Very but punctual. That's, that's the world we live in. It's seven days a week and, and on time and, and quick. That's surprising. I thought you were going to say they were getting loose and not, not meeting it, but instead, no. Getting only... faster, quicker, more reliable. Uh, it, it, I've just noticed a change this year over the course of yeah. the year. Do you think that's because they're taking further control of their supply chain? Because a lot of times when I would get something late, it would usually be because USPS right. was the carrier on it. Uh, UPS was usually pretty good. The problem with like a UPS, though, is you never get surprised. They're, never, they're, they're like a clock. 
If they say two days, it's there in two days. If they say right. three days, it's there in three. You're never going to get it early. But with Amazon, sometimes you can get surprised. And you'll get, it'll say yeah. two days. And like you said, you'll get it in 13 hours. Usually not late. I, I track it from the distribution centers, which seem to be in the New Jersey, Philadelphia area. And they're always, you know, you, you draw a circle within 500 miles overnight run around that. And you cover a big part of the U.S. population. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Dean. Thank you, guys. That's Dine who made in. the Dean list. We had IMO 2020. We had Don't Go Down Dangerous Hills. Like uh, the Grinch going through Whoville. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, e-commerce, e-commerce coming through strong. Good stuff. Thanks, we Dean. We like it. Thank Thanks, you. Dean. He's making a dynamic impression in freight as well. Yeah. You ever okay. do any big sledding down uh, down hills? You you a sledder? Oh, yeah. You Are, are you really? Yeah. I mean, I, Are you I, a skier? I grew a, a little bit. Yeah. Where do people ski around here in the south? Not, not, not many options. There's a little place in, uh, in Alabama. Yeah. You, you don't really... Is there it snows in Alabama? Is there a mountain? Yeah, yeah. What is the mountain called? I forget, but I I would never go there. What you know you know what you you go to you go to Colorado. That's yeah, what, that's what you do. You go to Colorado. <laughs> you go to Colorado. That would yeah. be a big deal. Where is Emily Zink? She's she's a Speaking big deal. Speaking of big deals, big deal. Come on in. Oh, here she comes. I believe. A little she's tardy. Like, she's like, you just had to call me. That's oh, okay. Like a uh, the next time we'll just ring a bell. Oh, there we go. like a little dog. Every time we do that, that's an angel my, gets its wings. That's what my dog does when she has to go to the Big deal. She rings a bell? Yeah. Oh, you like door trained She's her? She's bell trained. Wow. Yeah. She trained. trained her. You How trained do you, me. Oh, yes, too. that's true. Who's really the... You're, are you Pavlov's dog or are you Pavlov's own... Or the, who, what is Pavlov's dog's name? Pavlov's dog. No. I don't know what the dog's name Pavlov is. Pavlov Sparky? is that. And the dog... I don't it's know like what Frankenstein's the dog's name. monster... Is his name's not Frankenstein? That's Frankenstein, and then it's like Pavlov's dog. But the, what is the dog's name? If you in the comments, you get what is Pavlov's dog's name? Someone let us know, please. Let us know before the end of this please, podcast, please, please. So mm. you've had a jam-packed show so far. Lots of people in these days, yeah. and we got some really good questions. So I'm excited. Who gets oh. to go first? And last, I uh, believe let, it's. I think it's mine. My it's mine. My chance. Your chance. My time to shine. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Maritime air and overland trade routes in Europe are being piggybacked by criminal Mm. gangs deploying the latest digital supply chain technologies to help meet the rapidly growing demand for illegal drugs across the EU. Interesting. Big deal, little deal there, Dooner. Um, I... Gonna say it's a little deal just because with all technology, I mean, it, drug dealers were some of the first to jump in the digital game. You know, with talking about like the dark web and then appropriating Bitcoin yeah. and appropriating any type of technology, it's always going to fall into unscrupulous hands at some point. So, I mean, I don't know what that necessarily says, other than like just, I mean, other than like there's some drug lords out there that are way more efficient at running their supply chain than some uh, legacy companies. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a big deal. You know, we've got it all mapped out on um, our freight waves. Actually, it's through our American Shipper site. It's kind of an amazing logistical operation. These things are in the billions of dollars, and it's mainly a growth in maritime traffic. I've noticed yeah. from from the charts and stuff. So, um, a big deal. I mean, people are getting their drugs. What you know, and in great supply. Lots of point. It seems like Spain, Italy, and France. Boy, do they have a lot of opportunities for drugs. Via you don't give them any time. ideas over there, Chad. Well, I think e-commerce, too, is a big reason. It just gives another entry point. It's very easy to smuggle things because oh, yeah. there's just yeah. so many packages. Yeah, you're not checking everything. Drugs and... in the boxes. Yes. We, well. and it seems like we're hearing about more drug busts like, every week in the news. But if you think about it, it's only like one drug bust. And obviously, there's like millions and millions of drug yeah. packages. Yeah, we just hear about yeah. the big, yeah. big busts. Okay, French-based third-party logistics provider FM Logistic has introduced the ErgoScale, an ErgoSkeleton designed to assist warehouse employees to move packages and help protect their bodies from strain. So basically, <laughs> it keeps yeah. you upright when you go up and down, which is really yeah, cool. But these Hold on, Greg Hall says that Pavlov's dog's name is uh, Birka. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. We'll take where you know. know it. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> know to, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, let's see. I just told you Birka. <laughs> Beer, a oh, beer guy. See, I Bierka. still beer guy. Oh, beer guy. Is okay. German? Now I do know right. how to pronounce it. Is Pavlov um, beer guy? Uh, let's see. So I think that this is a little deal. This ergo scale thing, um, because it only helps with a weight fifty five pounds or lighter. Like that's where I would be. That would be my turning point. Is when it gets to be heavier, then that could make a difference. So. What about for the little, little petite deal. females well, needing help lifting stuff, Chad? We're not. We all don't power lift. Yeah. <laughs> Me either. But uh, no, I just think it's it's kind of neat. Um, I mean, with robots coming in, 
Like mm. this little like skeleton that supposedly doesn't get in your way. Like <laughs> No, he's wrong. It's a bit. huge deal because it's it's you know, <laughs> helping people with mobility. He, I don't think Chad's ever maybe broken a bone or something or had any type of disability and maybe that's why he's so insensitive towards people with those with those types <laughs> of uh, constraints true. put upon themselves. You know, to me, it's kind of like, uh, I love the movie Aliens, and when Ripley has the big exosuit and she's walking around in there, this is just another step towards that, about just becoming mechanized. Yeah, and I like the fact that this job is not oh, being wow. replaced, no, it's what? being yep. helped, yeah. Very, that, okay. Then okay, Diener. Inca Group, the holding company that runs the majority of IKEA stores, recently acquired a more than 40,000-acre pine forest in Texas. Mm. The purchase was an investment to source local wood for IKEA's home products. Big you know, deal or little deal? I was watching Broken on Netflix. It's a new series. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh -huh. it deals with like the counterfeit. It, it's the, the same people who did like Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations uh, and um, Inside the Box. No, just Anthony <laughs> Bourdain's No Reservations. I'm familiar with that. Uh, yes. They have the series Broken, and there's Popular. four different there's four different things they cover on there. One of them is makeup and all the counterfeiting, and that one's really good. And they also cover furniture, right? And IKEA is one of the major companies focused in there because of their. Uh, one of their dressers, I forget the name of it, but it, it topples yeah. over. Yeah. And they were like, well, the onus is on the consumer to moor it into the wall and stick it into the wall. And people are like, no, you can't just have a dresser that can fall and crush kids. You know, stop being so insensitive. Ikea, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's Chad Prevost's domain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very I mean, we still sensitive need... about dressers falling over on yeah. people, though. We still yeah. need an Ikea, like, over here, though. Um, so it's a little deal until, I don't know, they buy a Tennessee forest near Chattanooga. I will. I have to say, though, that, like, I mean, those really tall bookcases, like, I mean, you do have to moor them into the wall. They're, they're going because to it's junk. fall. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't oh. matter how not. If, if they're big, like, they, they can come down. It's yeah. like prop furniture. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that this is a pretty big deal because um, part of the strategy, apparently, from Ikea is that they are purchasing what they're calling locally sourced um, small, they're going to say they're sustainably farmed uh pine forests and yeah. forests, and in this case, this is the largest purchase of the several that they've made in the United States. Usually they're more in the in the range of, I think, 16 to 25,000 acres, and this is 42,000 acres uh, in Texas. So they do actually, it's not just like they're, they're finding a little place where they can kind of get away and have a little store. They're actually sourcing the wood, and, um, and I think that it's just one of those things of the, the potential of um, having small distribution centers, well, they have small little 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 forests. So one of my one of my sons, my three year old last night, he uh, he loves this segment. This is for the, my, both my kids. They love Big Deal, Little Wait, Deal. Wait, they watch this? Yes, they, they know this segment. They're very, they're very familiar. It's like, hi, Sebastian and Ronan. Hey, Sebastian and Ronan. So they they watch this, but one of the three year old he accident. Oh no, the five year old he accidentally got a little pee on his pajamas, <laughs> and then my three year old is just sitting on the ground without missing a beat. He's like, Little Deal. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're, they're, catching yeah, they're catching on. It runs in the family. Apparently. Oh my God, that's too cute. I love it. Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, Target says it now sources 80% of its online orders from stores, not their warehouses. And it recently retrained more than 300,000 U.S. workers to give them new titles and responsibilities. Is this a big deal or a little deal? Well, this is a big deal in terms of they're adapting to the changing morphine marketplace. We're all going to be having to do, strangely enough, it's so funny, like when technology comes along and automation begins replacing jobs, we all have to work a little harder. It's always been the case. Like our lives get busier and more frenetic that once that we're freed up to do a little bit more. Target is no exception, uh, and they are rolling with the times. Yeah, I th I think they're getting smart too. It's it, if you think about like warehouse space is really expensive. We talked about this on off the supply chain before uh, when we we're talking about you know what to do with with retail space, and it just makes sense to to use the space that already exists as uh, as a distribution center. Um, I just wish that their online, like their app, was better at telling you what's in stores. It's really yeah. Them and and Walmart. Like I was shopping for a TV a week ago, and it's very very difficult to tell. 
if it's where there. Yeah. Where, whether someone's going to yeah. be there or not. But if you do pick up at Target, like drop to your car, that actually works quite efficiently. Yeah. I don't know no, if you guys have ever done that. People love pick up at Target. Have well, you done that before? Yeah. No, I haven't done no. it, but I know a lot of moms who do it, and it so makes sense. Yeah. It tracks your phone and everything, and then like it knows when you're there, and you park by this red sign, and then you just hit a button to confirm, and a guy comes out and he just scans a QR code. Yeah. And then they just give you your stuff. Yeah. Wow. Is, does he have like a be- a white beard and is he wearing like, like a, a red suit? What? what? Like Santa Claus. <laughs> oh. No. Apparently. A lot of places are doing that. So I worked at an Ann Taylor for like eight years, the clothing store. And when people would purchase online, I would be sometimes packaging it in store because yeah. then they would source from the stores first and then I would ship it to people's homes. So a lot of places Man. have kind of gone to that model. But 80%. That is a big number. So that's very interesting. No, that is. That's, I think that's really the takeaway yeah, from that. Yeah. So coffee prices. I love coffee. I don't know about you guys. They are up over 20% in the recent weeks. Big deal or little deal, Dooner? Where? I wouldn't know. I mean, I was at Walmart. I, Chad and I were buying our wives' mocha Starbucks coffee thing. It was like, oh, nice I think husband. it was like $5.36 or something. It was It was definitely a good deal. Yeah, right? it was there at Walmart keeping the prices I, down. I didn't the see people. the 20%. Tw- the Not, 20% hasn't hit me yet. No. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's all that counts. Uh, no, I mean, it's, uh, well, apparently there is this bug going around, right? Like there is, um, what's it called? The rust. There's a, I, I'm, I'm looking for it real quickly. But it, but there's a, a bug going around that is like just wiping out entire plantations. Uh, in Latin America, it's happening. Apparently also in Spain. Also, there's been droughts keeping the supply down. I think the consumers, what we consume, 2 billion cups of coffee a year. And that demand's not going anywhere. Oh, that's, no. that's, 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 the, that's it? Only 2 billion cups of coffee uh, a year. It just seems like we would, I don't know, 350 like I drink million. Two billion myself. I thought you were going to say a day, a uh, year. Well, let me let me look for my sources so I get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll come two back bi- to you. Two, doesn't that seem small? It's a, it's it's really a tw- small. Yeah, 2 billion cups of Per day. Okay. Yes, there day. you go. I, I, hey, I can, I can be wrong. No. All right. Uh, me, all right. You admitted but, it. Uh, but it's a, a $20 billion industry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Coffee uh, is big ver- business. And, uh, I, yeah, no, I uh, love me some coffee. I used to roast them. Like, I used to buy them wholesale oh. green. And then I would roast them and, and make it, like, fresh. Because if you get them green, yeah. besides, they last, a, they stay fresh for up to a year. Wow. Unlike when you buy them already roasted, they stay fresh for two weeks. So when I go to my in-laws place, I was there for Thanksgiving. Uh, I can't really drink their coffee because they, it's one of those arguments where it's like, who's ever on their perspective, but they'll be like, oh, you want to make strong coffee? And I'm like, no, I just want to make it how the bag says, like a tablespoon <laughs> per <laughs> cup, not a teaspoon. But yeah. the, So don't call it strong. Like I didn't call yours weak. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why I get defensive no, either. My mom I don't know. It's just the way they say it. Do they make it so yeah. you can read a newspaper through it type of thing? I, I, what? Like they say, well, I don't want mine so I can read a newspaper through it. You know, oh, like, like it's so like transparent, it's like oh, translucent wow. coffee. Yeah. Like tea. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to look like tea. No. no I want it to be dark. All. Yeah, you want some good coffee. Oh, supposedly there's more caffeine in the lighter roasts. Oh, yeah. interesting. That's what they say. Very interesting. Well... Millennials strike again. A study by the National Christmas Tree Association says a 20% spike in real tree purchases and 12% rise in artificial tree purchases compared mm. to last year. Chad, big deal, little deal? Uh, um, <laughs> big deal, I guess. I'll just say. Uh, fairly, I mean, it's like millennials. They're they're hopping on the uh, what can't they the do? Christmas tree <laughs> train. A lot of stuff. They they get uh, they get blamed for everything, but um, they're also getting credit for the twenty percent. I just I find like I am so much more into getting a real tree. So yes. I'm happy mm-hmm. to see that there's more real trees being purchased yeah. than fake trees. It's so depressing to get a fake tree. I like yeah. the right? smell. You want the yeah. smell of a real tree. You know, yeah. millennials just hanging jewel pods all over their Christmas trees and whatever they do with their <laughs> Those lives. Those will be banned. <laughs> no. no uh, that's even more Gen Z. I, yeah, I, I like that there's a 20, 20%. Oh, that was on Broken, too, that there was a thing on, on vaping and how, like, 80% of like, high school kids are are vaping the jewels. And, I see them walking yes. around Chattanooga, like, these high, like 14-year-olds just vaping. vaping. Yes. The jewels? It kills me. And, and it's gone down a little bit since it's been <laughs> repressed a little bit, you know, yeah. like, they're... they're but they're still there, like deals being made in high schools everywhere. Yeah, when I was a teenager, like 
like regular smoking like spiked in the 90s and I think it's because that Pulp Fiction poster and like there are a lot of movies that like made it look cool yeah. but like now the good news is it's down to like 3%. Yeah. It was at like 33%. The thing is you could barely get away with smoking on school property yeah. right? because it was so smelly and then yeah. it lingered yeah. on your fingers and on yeah, your Yeah, yeah, you would have to sneak. You'd have to, you'd have to yeah. be and, sneaky. And believe me, I got busted many a time <laughs> yeah. in high school trying to get away. But the, the, the vaping, it's practically invisible. Yeah. You could it be doing like it right now. It's a flash drive. Yeah. So like, yeah. yeah. You could be doing it right now and nobody would know. You could <laughs> be zeroing the hit, as they say. Right. Uh, is that what the kids ripping are saying? Jewels. They say ripping yeah. jewels oh, and gosh. zeroing the head. I feel oh, like such an old person. Gosh. Like this is what the kids say. All right, so here's what the millennials say. They say they like um, they like Christmas trees, regular Christmas trees, better than the fake ones. So I like that. Okay. That's great. Um, yep. Yeah, oh, Dean was talking on the radio. He was saying that I guess the big deal here is that in 2009 during the recession, they didn't plant enough trees, and yes. it takes 10 years for the tree to mature. So trees could cost more money. Yes. I know I bought mine down the street. Chad paid seventy five dollars to his church, so I guess it was a charitable donation. Oh, yeah, that's fine. But this is amazing. Like when it's so big, I did wonder. I was like, how many years has this tree yeah, taken well, to I mean, arrive at its size? I got a seven and a half footer down by Walmart on the whatever that street is over there, oh, where yeah. they have the big inflatable Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, my wife is oh she's one of the long needle ones. She's bugged us. For oh years. yeah. And they actually had some there, and it was fifty five for a seven and a half footer. Wow. So. Pretty good. Do you get a? Do you have a tree? I don't. I, I sometimes get like a little. Oh, little Charlie tree. Brown tree. But my dog, she do you dress her up? Nosy. Do I dress my dog up? Yeah, for for Christmas. Like she an likes elf? wearing clothes, but no, I've never oh. dressed. She her likes wearing clothes. What kind of clothes? I just put t-shirts on her, so she. I like Michigan State. Well, it sounds basketball, like you do dress so, her up. Yeah, sure, yeah. but oh, okay. not never in Christmas gear. Oh. so I should put her in some Christmas Michigan State. Style. But you went to Dayton. Yeah, my brother went to Michigan State, oh. and I grew up outside East Lansing. So, oh, okay, yeah, oh. got to rep it, got to represent everything. <laughs> yeah. Michigan, Ohio. All How about the same. those Dayton Flyers? Didn't they win something? No, they almost beat Kansas in the oh. basketball tournament this oh, weekend, they the lost Maui tournament. Them. They lost by in overtime. Yeah, it was close. Oh, okay, good game though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of stuff Go going Dayton. on. Yeah. Go well, Flyers. Emily, what's coming up on the uh, what's coming up for Freightways so TV? So I was a little late coming in here because I was looking at our. We got a brand new episode of Off the Supply Chain. We're talking China again because it's always in the headlines. Tensions kind of, rising. Tensions rising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good panel on that. We have some great people who who know China well. A few of them who actually lived in China for a while. So good to hear their take. And we're just constantly working on content. I know my team is working on a big project that we're starting next week don't really want to talk about that yet <laughs> but yeah Ooh. so some changes are coming and i know we're just cranking out more and more content and the good thing is you have so many podcasts and a lot of those podcasts we're now going to turn into not yeah. just like this video and audio so you'll be seeing some new ones and i know steven was in here about 30 minutes ago and yeah you'll be seeing him on his own podcast pretty soon so yeah got a lot of stuff working yeah he's bringing that freight broker live brand yes. to here uh this week, I think Port Report might be debuting at, what time is that? Like, I think 3 o'clock, maybe on Thursday. Yep. So that's going to be coming on. I know um, Zach and Anthony's show is starting up, and I think we're going to give them a couple weeks of recording. But Great Quarter, guys, they are going to be able to stream pretty yep, much that, right yep. away. Yeah. No, they have a good show, and a lot of people have good feedback on that. A lot of I good I think they're podcasts. 4 o'clock on Thursdays, yeah. right? So there's a, a lot of good content, and then we're we're constantly looking for people to be on air talent. And I've gotten some good feedback from people here who are interested in doing an audition to do that. So that's yeah, always fun to fantastic to we continue need, to build the brand. We have to have like Freight Idol or Freight Cast yes. or Idol. Like, can, can we can that be a Freight Waves TV show? Who would you like, be? You out there? Who would be Randy? Who would be Simon Cowell? Who would be who? He's so jolly. He would. Yeah, have to be you'd Randy. be Randy. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a yeah. fun role to play. You could be, be Paula Abdul. I'll but, be Paula. Right. But. Simon Cowell was so critical. Yeah. Like, like of critical importance. Speaking of smoking, just... he like refuses to stop smoking indoors. Yes, I was reading that. And... No, Gabrielle Union yeah. lost her job because allegedly she told on him to, this is just one of the many straws that broke the camel's back, but she told him to stop smoking. And he yeah. said no. Amongst what other show things. What's that? America's got, uh, America's got talent? It's like the, the, it's not American Idol, but like the next, the next Someone, iteration yeah. or whatever it was. But I guess he just smokes and smokes and oh, smokes. Really? Indoors, yeah, yeah. apparently. Uh, and then he's crass or something. Yeah. I don't know. These are all uh, allegedly. These are all allegedly. allegedly. Yeah, we're not allegations. We're not yeah. allegations. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know who's on uh, Freeways Insiders this week? Tyler Robertson from Diesel Laptops. He is taking over like the uh, the truck analytics space with these these laptops. He has a really interesting story to how his company started. The guys at TTN Fleet Solutions actually sort of turned me on to his story, but he's also really, really good at social media. He's got a very strong following on there, and if you tend to, to notice, a lot of times on Insiders, I tend to key in on the people who are really good at social media just because 
it's easy to connect with them on LinkedIn and people are really good at social media tend to be friendly and open to doing these kind of opportunities. But uh, it's great stuff. And uh, on the back end, people who are, you probably notice that bug down there, but if you want to advertise with Freight Waves TV, uh, should they reach out to you? Yeah, reach out to me and let me know. E Zinc, S is in Sam, Z is in Zebra, I N K at FreightWaves.com. And yeah, we would definitely love to have you on the show. Advertisement. Yeah. You could, if you see someone's logo somewhere, your logo could potentially be there. So always great opportunities as we continue to grow and we love growing growing our sponsorships and growing our community with everyone. And don't that forget to download, download that Freightways TV app. There we go. Cowbell for the Freightways TV app. Wow. A little cowbell for us. Stephen Oldie's first day. Yes. You guys, do you remember your first day at Freightways? I do. It yeah. seems so long ago. It does. It seems like forever ago. Mine was in April, but Mine it seems like in June. In no, June. May, when May. was your first day? One, one, two oh, years truck. ago. <laughs> When was your first day watching what the truck, listening in, watching these, all these apps? Look out with everyone back here. We're back from work. You're back uh, slogging through Good that thing. Good to have you back. Giving, uh, for being here. that fat, trying to get back down Shout to fighting to weight Dean before Dean Christmas. Lynn. You don't want it to get out of control, man. Shout out to Strickland. Woo, Strickland business.